A couple days ago, I made a video where I made like a little game, right? And anything that you would type in chat would get ran as code. Flashback. Okay, look at that. We, I, I just, I just tell, I'm just moving the base plate up. End of flashback. So players, you know, my idea was like, you can type in like, I don't know, like instance dot new parts or something. And then you could, you know, put that in the workspace and then like, wow, a new part is now summoned or whatever, right? Like that was my idea. And when I made that video, Roblox banned me for about a day and they also got the game taken down and the reason for so I, I log on to roblox right it literally says like it, it logged me out and i try and log back in and it's like your account has been suspended for 24 hours because you made a game that promotes cheats and exploits somehow even though the, the whole idea of the game was that you just run code there was nothing che like i don't know it's it was very stupid the game is still down i can't really you know get it back up but that gave me an interesting idea, and this will be a quick video, this won't be like a huge, amazing new concept, but just like, what if I were to make a Roblox ability that just crashes players, okay? I've actually had a video idea in mind for a while similar to this, where you just make like these like fourth wall abilities, like, I don't know, an ability which uh, makes like a fake pause menu, which is, uh, which is a cool video that I might do soon, but just like these types of abilities. And one of the ideas that I've had which was kind of obvious, was like, oh yeah, maybe we could try and kind of like crash the player a little bit. Or like, I guess a better term would be lower their frame rate. And with what happened recently with Roblox banning me for cheats and exploits, for some reason, uh, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not too confident in making a whole ability that crashes a player. Because who knows, they might ban me for like another week or something, which obviously would not be good because they also ban you from Roblox Studio, which is also incredibly stupid, right? But this is the thing. I'm just curious to see whether an ability like this is even possible, okay? So this is where we get to the scripting part of the video, which I know might sound boring, like you might be sitting here being like, oh, but scripting is boring. It's actually, it's, it is kind of boring, no, you're right. But look, look, here's how I make scripting fun, okay? I'll actually tell you, because a lot of people have been asking me, how do you script so amazing and, and perfectly and amazing? And uh, my secret, is as follows okay number one you need to understand what you're trying to do so i'm trying to basically what i'm trying to do is i want to make an ability okay maybe uh i guess i guess we could follow in the footsteps of the previous game where like you type something in chat which in this case what i'll do is whenever you type the name of someone in chat so i'll type my username when you type someone's name in chat and then press a key so i don't know maybe you press like r or something or maybe actually no in fact just whenever you type a name and that name actually belongs to a player in the server then that player starts lagging for like three seconds let, let, let's just let's just do something like that right i think i think that's a interesting idea that we could do so then we just have to script that real quick right so just whenever a player actually you know joins the game we can connect that to a function we can get the player and then we can also get the player chatted event okay so whenever the player chats we can get their message and then do something else and in this case i'm just going to simply say if uh game dot players find first child message then we could just print game uh game dot players message okay so basically you know we're going to type the username and then if it actually finds the player associated with the username we're going to print the username so if i type just random gibberish that's not going to work but then if I, if I type my own username which should be case sensitive there we go it actually finds my player and it prints out my name so that that's good the player detection system works and the next thing we need to do is actually to figure out how to even lag the player in the first place because uh we need to find a way to lag just one player and not every player, right? So how can we do that? Well, what I'm thinking of is we can just make a, a, a local script like so, and local means it's local to just one player. And so then, you know, whenever someone types a username, so for example, let's say someone types the username, the original lamp, then my local script is gonna pick that up and go like, oh damn, uh, time to lag the player for like three seconds, okay? So here's what I think we can do. We can make a variable called is lagging, is equal to false or actually no let's set it to true just for this example and then we could say while task wait which is going to make an infinite loop that is just going to run as fast as it possibly can and what we can do is we can say if not is lagging then continue and just meaning if is lagging is false then we're just not going to do anything right but then if is lagging is true 
then we can make a loop that's going to last, um, I don't know, like how many times? Let's say 200, okay? A loop that's going to run for 200 times. And we're going to say print math square root. And we're just going to give it the number of the loop, okay? Like so. Now, the reason I'm doing it like this is because what, what this is going to do is that every single frame, it's going to 200 times print the square root of whatever number we're currently looping through. So first is going to be the square root of 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. And it's going to do that all the way until 200. And then it's going to, you know, do that every single frame. And the reason I'm using math.squareRoot, by the way, is I just saw this somewhere. I'm, I'm honestly not even too sure how true this is. But I've heard that this is one of the more, like, um, resourceful functions. Like, where the computer actually has to spend a bit of time to actually calculate, you know, what this should be. Um, the reason I'm printing this is because I've noticed that when you don't print it, it doesn't lag. Um, so I'm actually not too sure if this would work in a real game. But let's just... Let's just ignore that real quick. What's going to happen is that if I actually start playing the game, it's going to start printing, and this will be the lag, okay? Like so. Obviously, better computers will be able to handle this a lot better. Worse computers will be able to handle this a lot worse. But I'm running this on a 2022 MacBook, which is often really good. Whenever I play Roblox on here, it works flawlessly. So I would argue that my computer is fairly good. It's, I would say it's above average, right? So like, if for a laptop, right? So if it's lagging like this, I think 200 is a fairly good number to use. And so really then all we have to do is just whenever this thing gets done, so whenever we actually do find, you know, the name of a player, whenever we actually find the player, well then what we can do is we can just temporarily set is lagging to true for like three seconds, okay? Because if it's false, let me just play test this right now, just double check. Yeah, there we go. So if it's false, it runs absolutely fine, right? So that's basically what all we have to do. And the way we can communicate, you know, between this script and this script, a lot of, you know, a lot of regular viewers and, you know, expert, amazing pro developers will know, but you got to use a uh, remote event, which is just a way for you to communicate between server scripts and local scripts, right? Um, I'm thinking we could rename these, but honestly, I don't really think we should, uh, but it, it is just a good habit to rename things. So honestly, I'll just say lag event. I'm going to call this, I don't know, player script because it deals with players. And then I'm going to call this lag local script, like so. Yeah, and so then all we really need to do is we just need to say game.replicated storage. I guess we can wait for child lag event. And then we can fire it to the player, which, you know, our player messaged, right? So we will just copy this and we will fire it to this player. And all we need to do now really is just say game replicated storage, wait for child lag event on client event connect function, like so. I'm going to set is lagging to be equal to true and I'm going to wait for three seconds and then I'll just set is lagging back to false. Okay. And I think that should be it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Let's see if I just type some random stuff. No errors. That's good. If I type in, let's see, is it case sensitive? Because my name is like, it has a capital T then capital O then capital L. It is case sensitive. Okay. Uh, so I have to actually ensure that the proper stuff is capitalized the original lamp. So everything is fine right now. We're all cool, right? Okay. 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 And we're fine. Amazing. Yeah. Three seconds of that. Actually, that's actually so perfect. And then just double checking if I can do it again. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, there we go. Now, obviously, you know, there's some polishing we could do. Like, for example, maybe like make it clear that you're actually lagging someone or that you're being lagged. Uh, I think adding a cooldown on this thing also would be smart, which should be fairly easy. I mean, we can just make a table, add a player to that table, then after a couple, some time, just remove the player from the table. And then if the player is in the table, we can just prevent them from, you know, chatting. If you did not understand a word I just said, don't worry about it. Uh, that was a poor explanation. But basically, what I just did here is I just made an ability which crashes a player, okay? Um, <laughs> this is actually pretty, pretty fun to mess around with. Now, I did use the terms crashing the player, you know, like earlier in the video. And what if we just do that? Honestly, 20,000. I am a bit scared to do this, though, because what I know, you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? My computer is just going to freeze up and then I'll just have to reset. And then, yeah. Uh... A few moments later. Honestly, on second thought, this isn't something I want to do because I've done stuff like this last time or like previously, right? 
and this just makes my Roblox Studio freeze up, and the only way I can fix it is by resetting my entire laptop, which, seeing as I'm in the middle of, of recording, isn't something I really want to do. So I guess let's just set this to be 5 seconds, okay? I think a 5 second cooldown is a good number. And so yeah, if I just, again, type in my name, the original lamp, um, yeah, I'm lagging out, 5 seconds, and now it's up, and there we go, I'm not lagging anymore. Now, like I said, I would test this game, like I would actually upload this as a game and link it, you know, but I'm afraid that Roblox will... I don't even know how they figured out with my previous game, like I don't, I don't, I, I don't know where they got the whole cheats and exploits thing from, because they must have somehow scanned the code and been like, oh wow, this code allows for exploits, which it, it really doesn't, but this, that's what I'm afraid of, so what if they, what if they, they somehow, their like AI looks at the code somehow and then just goes like, oh wow, this is lagging the player and then we, you can't do that because the player can't, I don't know bro, it's, it's just annoying, right, so... I, I'm not gonna do this because I, I don't want to risk my account getting banned for another seven days. Or not another, just a, a bonus seven days. But look, all the code is here, okay? What I want you to do, all of you, like literally every person who watches this video, I want you to c copy everything I did in this video, post this as an actual playable game. Worst case scenario, you'll get banned for 24 hours like me. Best case scenario, um, Roblox doesn't do anything. And then now we know that now we can make abilities which crashed the player, <laughs> you know? In fact, actually, you know what I'll do? Just real quick. This uh, this has really, like, n little value to actually add to the video, but um, I've actually learned this recently. Apparently, if you can set, like, color correction numbers and a bunch of other values. You can set them above their limit. So, like, saturation, like, li the limit is one, right? But then you can just keep adding numbers. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we could just do this, right? Contrast, we could... Yeah, it's like saturation, something like this. So what I could do then is I could just disable this, and then whenever we actually, you know, whenever is lagging is actually legit. Then we could just say game, uh, lightning, or sorry, lighting, wait for child, color correction, dot enabled is equal to true. And then we could just do the same thing, but then when time is up, we'll just set it equal to false. So I guess that's just gonna, I don't know, it's just gonna give us a little visualizer of like, Oh yeah, you're being hacked, or lagged, or whatever. Oh yeah, awesome. That's actually perfect. <laughs> that is such a necessary addition. So yeah, bro, we got the two scripts, we got the absolutely necessary color correction with a 99 saturation. Looks amazing, as always. Um, remote event, blah blah blah. But yeah, honestly, like, like I said before, I only made this because Roblox just pissed me off because they just banned me for no reason. Honestly. Like the like the game like the, the game that I had in mind. Like, cause let me let me just tell you exactly what I had in mind. Okay, the idea was that anyone can type stuff in, and then that gets executed as code. Right? I would understand it if like people could just execute anything. Like, I get how that could be an an issue where maybe there's a way for them to get player information or like something like that. But like, I specifically had a list of blacklisted words. So like, I literally went through basically every possibility like off camera after making the video. I banned, like, marketplace service so that you can't get the player's, like, country, right? Like, getting someone's country isn't a big deal, but, like, you know, I I, I blocked that. I made it so you can't destroy anything. I made, I made it so that you can't change anything about the spawn location. I made it so that you can't, um... Like, I, I added so I added a lot of stuff. I made it so that you can't crash the game. Like, I made, I made the game literally as playable as possible while still allowing the players to do stuff like change the position of the spawn location or change the or sorry the base plate or change the color or like anchor someone uh but that's fine because they can just unanchor themselves like like it was such an interesting idea and roblox just didn't like it and that's really annoying honestly some guy in discord actually messaged me and he said that um there's a way around it and i looked into it and it involved like a bunch of weird complicated stuff so i'm sure there is a way around it um, so again, if anyone is watching who knows how to get around this stuff, I would appreciate it if you make like a, I would appreciate it if you make a game like that, like what I made in my previous video, which Roblox blocked very rudely. But yeah, like I said, you know, just copy this, turn it into a game, see if Roblox allows this. If it does, well then I have so much, honestly, so much cool ideas for like <laughs> fourth wall abilities that, you know, we could script.
I will also add on real quick that, you know how I, like, always plug my course? Like, it's, it's it even became, like, a meme right now. Like, oh, he's plugging his course. Um, I'll plug, I'll plug it again, but, like, stay here because it's 50% off, right? For the next, like, three days or four days, I think. Um, so do go check it out. Preview it for free. It's an amazing course. Has literally every, meaning, meaning of life, every, everything you, have, you ever need to know. Um, and join the Discord again as well. Uh, people have been complaining that there's a bunch of like rogue mods in the Discord, which I do kind of agree with. Like the mods are kind of stupid, um, but you know it's an interesting Discord. So if you do join, just uh, be aware that there are things in there which I don't know. And yeah, so as per tradition, I will delete everything. Honestly, I'm not even too sure why I even started doing this. Like I just I delete everything and then I say like, oh yeah, now we're back to basics. Um, I'm not even too sure what that means. But it sounds kind of cool. It makes for a good outro, I guess. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.